I always say Jesuit High School is explained by three things. The high expectations we have of the students, the support that we give them, and the great sense of camaraderie and connection that results because of high expectations and strong support. But it's more than just the school to the students. The students expect us to perform at our best as teachers, and the parents expect the best of us, and we expect the best of them. That high expectation, strong support, and a strong sense of camaraderie and connection is what Jesuit High School has been for so many years. And I'm so grateful to our alumni who continue to hold us accountable for that by holding us, who run this school at the present time, as we hold it in trust that we are expecting the best as you expect the best of us. And I'm grateful to all of our alumni for the great support that they give us and the great sense of connection that results because of that. You, of course, make Jesuit High School what it is, and we, as we continue to ongo, as the, in the ongoing process of making Jesuit High School the place that brings out the best in the young men that have been entrusted to it. So I'm grateful to our alumni and to let you know that we're continuing to move forward in so many areas. And uh, I'm not going to give a detailed report on that. It's all, all available on, on the, in the newspapers and our website and so forth. But just to let you know that Jesuit High School continues to flourish because of the expectations that you give to us and the support that you give us and the strong connect connection that has developed because of it. As we look back upon our past, each of us looks back upon his past as, at Jesuit High School, we remember certain things. We remember uh, certain events that are happy events and certain events that may not have been happy events. Uh, we hope that uh, you have remembered more happy events, that's why you're here. <laughs> but to, today, uh, we need to recognize a graduate of Jesuit High School who wants to continue his Jesuit High School experience for others in a different situation. Because he has, John E. O'Shea Jr., the class of 1980, has taken upon himself, along with others, of course, in the Houston community, to develop a Jesuit high school that will not exactly replicate what we do here at Jesuit High School, not in its details, not in its curriculum necessarily, but in its high expectations, in its strong level of support, and the great sense of camaraderie and connection. That's what John O'Shea has brought to uh, the uh, Crystal Ray Jesuit College Preparatory of Houston and he and his colleagues and friends there that have made this school as just beginning to, to start up. It's only, uh, in, it has not been in existence very long, but he is one of the, the founding fathers of that school and as a Jesuit who sees that our commitment to the education of youth is being continued in a different way, in a more challenging way, we are very deeply appreciative to John O'Shea for all that he has done for that school and for our school and for the education of youth in general. So I'd like to honor John E. O'Shea as the 19, the class of 1980, as the 2015 Alumnus of the Year. So thank you, Father. Um, but now that, now that the, the plaque's engraved, isn't it? Because I've, I've known three John O'Shea's in my life. My grandfather, John B. O'Shea, my dad, Johnny O'Shea Sr., and my classmate, John T. O'Shea. And Father McGinn, you got the wrong John O'Shea. I'm sorry. <laughs> but I'm not giving it back. You know, I was looking. Um, I, I've been out of Louisiana since I graduated from Louisiana Tech and spent all my adult life in Texas. In fact, my three kids are here and they'll tell you they're native-born Texans and they're proud of it. Um, but I, I was looking back on the past alumni from out of the state of uh, Louisiana who have gotten it, and you have Rusty Staub from New York, class of 61. You have the uh, developer of the ATM, let me get his name right here. Um, 
Don Wetzel, who's class of 46 from Dallas, you know, the former Archbishop of the Archdiocese of Miami, the Most Reverend John Favalora, class of 54. So the way I see it, you had a player, a patenter, a priest, and now you have an imposter. So, <laughs> but anyway, um, what I'd like to do is I, I talk about the two Jesuit themes I've tried to live my life by, one man for others and, and AMDG. And, I'm a little humbled to be here after follow uh, Father Sermon when he talks about the people who um, were with Jesus were clueless, unknowledgeable, and self-promoting. And so I hope that's uh, not <laughs> what I represent. But <laughs> as I've grown and matured, I've come to see a real correlation between man for others and the Catholic Church's teaching of giving time, talent, and treasures. In my teens and 20s, I had lots of time and I used it in getting my education and doing lots of socializing. But I also wanted to grow into manhood and found that as I volunteered my time, it made me a more con content and happier man. During those years, the commodity I had most was time, so I chose to use it to volunteer at the church as a lector and Eucharistic minister, with youth as a youth minister, and as a retreat leader, and with my children in their school and sporting activities. As I got more experience through volunteer activities, I was developing some talents. The for in man for others, to me, is a call to give back. As I saw different programs, I learned how various social ministers thought about volunteers. I was asked to be on my first volunteer board and learned that I could take best practices from one ministry and apply it to others. I was working for God's greater glory and felt great about it. Over the years, I've sat on boards for groups as varied as community organizations, churches, schools, scouts, sporting leagues, and for-profit companies. Others and man for others to me is how we use our treasures. Hoarding our treasure leads to selfishness and self-destructive behaviors. When I'm open to sharing my treasures with others, I'm truly living God's greater glory. I've been very fortunate to have been involved with four startup companies and one startup school during my career. One of these companies was a failure. In fact, in, in the Wall Street Journal this week, they had an article about America being the failure experts. We expect it, forgive it, often celebrate it. If tolerance of failure is a prerequisite for success, then you need to love your failures as much as you do your successes. I started my first company while I was getting my MBA at the University of Texas. It was very successful in a short period of time, in fact, after two years, it got to the point where it needed real management expertise, so my wife, Charlene, kicked me out and put herself in charge. <laughs> the second company I founded grew to be one of the fastest energy-growing uh, companies in America, and in, uh, we sold part of it in 2006 and the rest in 2008. And um, in 06, after we sold it, uh, Charlene and I set up a foundation, and uh, actually we used our Jesuit training to um, spent six months thinking about what we wanted to, to, uh, to do. And we, uh, we uh, have focused on inner city education and women's issues. And this, the, really, this inner city education became a mission for me. And in fact, uh, I, I can't leave without talking about Pope Francis. He was in New York City uh, yesterday, and he actually visited uh, a school. He visited Our Lady Queen of the Angels School in East Harlem which is actually only two blocks away from the Cristo Rey New York City, run by um, one of Father McGinn's friends, Father Joe Parks, a great Jesuit himself. But the Pope there told the kids, he said, MLK's dream was that many children like you could get an education. It is beautiful to have dreams and to be able to fight for them. Those outside the bounty of this world have an, have an inherent right to education. And there were at least two New Orleans connections uh, with the Pope yesterday. One is, as he entered the, the school, the, the uh, students were singing when the saints go marching in. <laughs> and the second, when he, he traveled from there through uh, Central Park to Madison Square Garden, and uh, there were several performers there, one of which was uh, 1986 graduate, Harry Connick Jr., performed for the Pope uh, yesterday. So. Um, but Father McGinn talked about what I've done with Cristo Rey, and it's, it's uh, in our country today, 8% of those in the bottom quartile graduate from college. And as a Jesuit high school graduate, that, that uh, 
that's deplorable. When every single one of my classmates, we were all expected to graduate from college. So Shalane and I got involved with inner city education in 2007. We were helping some grade schools. Uh, we learned through um, Strake Jesuit that the Jesuits were looking to bring a uh, inner city college prep school um, to Houston. So we, we got involved in 2007. Um, the school opened a year early. It opened in 2009. So we, we graduated 80, 80 more kids who uh, otherwise wouldn't have had a Jesuit education. Um, one of the things about Cristo Rey is if you can afford to go to Cristo Rey, you can't go there. The, uh, the tuition is $2,000. The average, that's the nameplate tuition, the average tuition paid is $25 a month um, for our students to go there. Um, and they get a Jesuit quality education. And I've been on the Houston board um, since it opened and, and I now sit on the Cristo Rey National Board. And in fact, we had a change of leadership during a transition. I, I ran the network um, this time last year for about six months. So give my time, talent, and treasures to my church and community has helped me to live as a man for others. I'm not always successful, but always try as hard as I'm able. I'm up here today thanks to many, many people who have helped me grow as a man and as a Christian. So in the Jesuit spirit of gratitude, I like to thank the many friends, teachers, and classmates who are here today and especially recognize and thank my family. I want to thank my parents, John and Ann O'Shea, so much, who sacrificed so much so that their four children could go to Catholic schools. Uh, <clears throat> my mom went back to college to get a teaching degree when we were young and in grade school. She was a full-time mom and a full-time student. I don't know how she found the energy to give us so much love and attention when I'm sure she was exhausted. She eventually got her teaching degree and taught at Archbishop Blank for many years. My dad was always in a community service. He was president of many organizations, including the YMBC and the Lions Club. I got my commitment to give back from him. So thanks, Mom and Dad, for being here today and for giving me that sense of service and community. I want to thank my children for being here today. Uh, they came in from three different states. My, uh, my daughter Julie and her husband Chris came in from Dallas. Um, I appreciate the time y'all took to, to be here with me. My son Chris uh, came from Dayton, Ohio. Chris just started a job working with the Dayton Dragons, the um, professional baseball team. So uh, he's in his first month. So trying to get off your first month of work to come see your old man, uh, I really appreciate that, Chris, so thanks. And my, son, and my son Jim, and this is no joke, my son Jim is, at, is a senior at Syracuse. Yes, that's Syracuse. <laughs> so as all the Louisiana people were going up north, Jim was attempting last night to come south. Jim's flight didn't make it uh, last night, so he actually had to get up early this morning after spending three hours at the airport yesterday. Um, can't got to the airport early and got here in time, I think, to see the third quarter of the game. So he, uh, he uh, saw it about the time when uh, the Orange kind of ran out of uh, energy and with, uh, with the Tigers today. So, and my, my sons, Chris and Jim, and my son-in-law, Chris Weber, are all straight Jesuit grads. And it's really hard for a Blue Jay to sit in Houston and root for a, a, a Shaw Green colored Jesuit whose who's mascot are the Crusaders. <laughs> So I'd like to also acknowledge my in-laws, Jim and Kay Brandau. Jim is a class of 51. Um, I was the first Blue Jay to ever date uh, their daughter. And uh, I asked her to marry me while I still had the Jesuit halo before I've tarnished it over the years. And he said yes. And finally, I want to thank my wife, Charlene. We met when I was a junior at Jesuit, and she was a junior at Immaculata. I know the Jesuit got the girl of my dreams, as her parents knew what good boys, Jesuit boys, were. She has been with me on my life's journey and has been steadied me when I've slipped and pulled me up when I've fallen. She's been my partner in our marriage and family and has raised three super children. We have tried to be good stewards of the resources that God has bestowed on us, as she has shown me the path to success in life. 
So during um, certain times, I've, I've written uh, poems for birthdays and anniversaries, and um, I'd like to share a poem I wrote about what Jesuit means to me today. A boy becomes a man. Jesuit high, our alma mater dear. Before I came through your doors, I was in such fear. How does a kid with parents from outside the city get accepted into your school without any pity? A fearful freshman was I before coming to Bank Street, pushed out the car, I really had cold feet. A great institution run by the Jesuits, I wasn't really sure if I had it. Being taken under the wings by a great president shot to an eager young student really meant a lot. Of course, there was Harry with that great booming voice, sometimes disciplined, but usually praising us boys. Of lo a love of numbers I learned in Mr. Wright's class of geometry. Harry Clark taught his formulas and lots of chemistry. Coach Sam's advice for life and wrestling was to always keep your chin up. I explored the West with Father Roca, even drinking wine out of a cup. At the top of every paper was AMDG, here at Jesuit, God's greater glory was given to me. I learned the great Jesuit motto, be a man for others. My classmates became more than friends. We became brothers. My education at Jesuit lasted only four years, but, but the man it molded me into lasted all my career. I'm proud of my school and all that I was taught here representing all alumni really means a lot. Thank you, Father. And God bless Jesuit High School.